From the good news according to St. Matthew we read, Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how to entangle him in his talk, and they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of God truthfully, and care for no man, and for you do not regard the position of men. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why do you put me to test, you hypocrites? Show me the money for the taxes. And they brought him a coin, and Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, and I bring you his love. Amen. Representatives came to Jesus from the very rich and powerful persons in Jerusalem. They were in pursuit of Jesus' position about paying taxes. Presented with a Roman coin, they wanted to see if Jesus would comment harshly about Caesar, whose forces had conquered Israel. If he opposed the tax, he would acquire the wrath of Rome. If he approved, he would lose the support of the people. Being played by the players, Jesus knew their motivations and thus called attention to the coin. Whose coin is it, he asked. He said, show me the coin. Made in, made in lion the, in the empire of Rome, the coin stated that Caesar is a god. The inscription on one surface read, Tiberius Caesar, Divi Augusti, Filius Augustus. And on the reverse side it says, Pontifex Maximus, the Most High God. Also, on the reverse side is an attending image of the Imperial Mother Livia, who was posed there as a goddess of peace. The coin rolled into Jerusalem from Rome as a matter of trade and clinked among them as an affront to the faith of Israel for a claim for Caesar and equality with God himself. This is very much like the pantheistic movements that we Christians suffer from today. This stupidity would place Christianity and the ranking of our Lord as equivalent to other worldly beliefs and the respective founders. In our own time, we have seen such high-profile persons as Oprah Winfrey and Bill Gates, George Soros, Silicon Valley personalities who either promote or pay for heresy. These are today's demonic-led Pharisee powers that send their mavens into our society and our churches. In our scripture lesson, we hear that the puppets of the Pharisees went to Jesus and they were cordial in their attention as they tried to trap him. However, Jesus' answer to them was a deliberate statement of the, about the priority of God over all things, and not a determination of the relationship of Jesus or his followers to the finances of any political state. Dodging their evil intent, Jesus echoed the faith of Israel. As we know, according to the prophet Isaiah, God is the one who casts down nations before himself and overthrows kings. The readers of Matthew knew the Pharisees as a financial power and were aware that their righteousness was not quite satisfactory. 
They were the ones who had sent their political wannabes to challenge Jesus. Recently, to my dismay, the language and attitudes present in the U.S. presidential debate and the recent town hall fiascos on television mirror the tactic of the Pharisees. The powers that hide behind the paychecks promised to Chris Wallace and Samantha Guthrie determine subtleties of those debate and table talk moments. In like manner, the evil specter of big money stood very tall behind the question laid out before our Lord. You see, the powers that held the purse strings of Israel thus far in Matthew's gospel had wished and done only ill toward Jesus. Therefore, Jesus' concluding statement of the Pharisees, we note in our reading, they only asked about Caesar, not about God. This identified them as hypocrites. This means that they were two-faced, questioning good for evil reasons. They asked their questions nicely, but the demonic powers behind them had threatening overtones. We loudly hear the words of the Old Testament prophet and our Lord Jesus, as his words ring out that God's claim on a person has no limits. His authorship and ownership embraces all areas of our lives. By comparison, any instruction about paying taxes stands as a completely different secondary level. Although Jesus reported that the followers of the political powers were surprised, it is clearly that he saw through them. He defeated them since they quickly left him in the same way as the demonic tempter had left him in the desert. We might wonder then, what were the representatives of the Pharisees, lawyers and scribes, surprised about? What did they marvel at? Jesus had reminded them to give God that which belongs to God. In other words, Jesus had told them to give of themselves and to give themselves. We need to note that. Jesus told them to give of themselves and to give themselves. Jesus clearly told the inquirers that they should feel free to render to Caesar that which bears his image and legend, but more importantly to God, they should with abandon render or give back that which God had impressed with his own divine image and name. He, they want, he wanted them to return to God. So it is with we who challenge his ownership today. Be assured, by no means does Jesus make equals out of Caesar and God our Father. He does not retract his earlier declaration that it is impossible to be the slave of two masters simultaneously. Even if, speaking literally, Without a trace of sarcasm, Jesus was limiting our obligation to worldly powers, to Caesar, and to the payment of coins, while the obligation to God simply has no boundary for us. Let's be reminded. These represent the sinful world, and they went away surprised. They were marveling that their political victim proved to be their eternal master. Maybe we should do the same. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.